first case set for argument is case number 29330, State of Ohio versus Dominique Adams. State of Ohio has waived oral argument, so we will just be hearing from Mr. O'Brien on behalf of uh, Ms. Adams. And, uh, Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams, I'm sorry. And we've read the briefs and are prepared to proceed if you want. Judge, I know the rule is that uh, I should indicate how much time I would need to reserve for rebuttal. I don't think that's going to be a necessity not, today. Not needed here Very on this one. <laughs> Your Honor, January 23rd, 2018, Mr. Dominic Adams is driving a fairly new 2018 Ford. He's in the Kelly Avenue area of Akron. It is approximately 1.30 in the morning. He is by himself. As he's driving his vehicle, he passes an Akron cruiser, which is manned by two uh, officers, Oswick and Collins. They determine that Mr. Adams is driving a vehicle that doesn't have its taillights on, and this deserves a stop, and, and curious that they may be, they do a U-turn, pull Mr. Adams over with no incident. At they no point lights, did, because a lot of those uh, cruisers activate the camera when the lights are activated. Judge, that is a crucial point here. The dash cam is either not working or not there. The officers testify in different directions. One officer says it's not working. Another officer says I'm not sure we even had one. If they were going one direction and he was coming another direction, what would, good would the dash cam have done to show that his taillights were on going the opposite direction? I, I don't disagree, Your Honor. What they testified to is they turn around and look, and they claim that the taillights are off. Wherein, when they approach the vehicle after it stopped, both their dash cams, their I'm sorry, cams. both their body cams show the taillights are on. They even testify that when they approach the vehicle, their body cams show the taillights are on. When the officers come up to the car, they have observed no illegal driving, no bad traffic stops, no criminal activity, no dope or any contraband being thrown out of a vehicle, no attempting to run, but what they're doing is, it's our contention that them stopping that vehicle was simply a pretext to search the vehicle. It's 1.30 in the morning, there's literally no traffic out there, so they come up with a reason just to pull this vehicle over. Was that raised at the suppression hearing? I raised it, Your Honor, indirectly because it was my belief that this uh, individual was stopped because he was African American. And that was raised at the suppression hearing? Yes. By the way, not to be picky, but we do record the uh, arguments, so try to stick by the podium there. I, I understand, Your Honor. Trial, trial, being uh, able exactly. to wander around the trial. Uh, what we have here, Your Honor, is the issue is whether or not the police officers had a legitimate reason to stop Mr. Adams' vehicle, or was this just a pretext to search it? As a result of them stopping the vehicle, one of the officers walked by the vehicle, looked inside the vehicle, and saw a handgun sitting on the seat of, I believe, the third seat of this SUV. They then arrested Mr. Adams at this point. But it's our contention that this is a Fourth Amendment issue, and the Fourth Amendment was created back in the 1790s to protect people, their property, and their dignity from police intrusion. Counsel, You're let's on. just, um, for the sake of argument, Can we do? 
let's say it's not adequately raised or wasn't raised at all, what can we do as an appellate court? Are we stuck? I believe this court can find that there was the court trial court committed error in not suppressing it and order that the suppression should have been ruled and then dismiss the case or remand back. On what basis though? Plain error or what? Because I'm, I'm taking it given that let's say like the state says it wasn't raised, that wasn't raised that uh, they contested that you contested this time. You know ordinarily we can't do anything because if it's not raised below we are not allowed to to look at it because it's it's, it's forfeited. So I'm just saying on what basis can we overturn the suppression ruling if it wasn't raised the, below the stop was raised? We just we just can't do stuff on our own, right? I agree with with that, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. But I think the whole idea of the stop was raised. That the I, I, that's what I was saying. Assuming it wasn't raised, I see. Mm -hmm. Assuming it wasn't raised because that's what the state is arguing. And I'm trying to figure out because, quite frankly, you have some compelling facts here. Just, you know, from what I've read, I haven't, you know, gone through everything, but you've got some compelling facts here. And so, I'm just wondering if the stop was not raised, and we assume it wasn't, for just the sake of argument here this morning, is there anything we can do about these compelling facts? I believe the court has within its power its inherent power to do what is right. I believe that, I know the court is usually bound by the record and the facts below, but I think it also has an equitable power to use the facts as, you, as Judge Carr indicated, that they are very compelling. And the testimony of the police officers indicates the lights were on. The body camera show the lights were on. Clearly, these officers, and, and we have to have good police work, otherwise we have anarchy. But I believe these police officers, if I may, it was a quiet night. They were just looking for something to do. And they stopped the vehicle, came up with the idea of no taillights. And then all of a sudden, their body camera show that those taillights are on. Now what are they going to do? And they, in effect, get lucky and see a gun in the back of the car. I hope I'm not being too obtuse, Your Honor. But I believe that the whole issue, that the stop was argued uh, at the uh, suppression level. The... Um, It was Avis budget. Okay. It was the car was leased at the Akron uh, municipal, not the municipal airport, the Akron Canton Airport. Right. Right. And that's where it was leased from. It was the vehicle was a, a month or two old. Right. So I was going to say that evidence was introduced in the suppression. Yes, it was. That seems to go to the issue of stop, and that's why I was wondering. Okay. Uh, I've taken up enough time. I'm sure other people have questions. <laughs> But it appears I have a little more time than I normally would have. Uh, the, um, there is no evidence that the stop was for anything else other than this, what I believe to be a pretext to search the car. The officers testified to no bad driving, no red lights, no stop signs being run, no speeding, no weaving, nothing like that. All they say is, we looked back and we saw that there were, in their words, no taillights. Yep, when they walk up, there are taillights. So the prosecutor that. stipulates, Prosecutor Brian Stano stipulated that those lights were on when those police officers walked up to the rear of the car. Uh, After they turned around, did they follow the vehicle for yes, sir. some distance? Not very far. They, they put their lights on and Mr. Adams pulled over. There was no testimony whatsoever of any chase or any type of 
eluding the police. Um, the police officers also testified that the headlights were on. And I would argue that if your headlights on at night, your taillights are going to be on. So, so you're saying the headlights were on even as they passed the car. They didn't have any problem with the headlights being on. Correct. But is it possible that in going the other way, when they now see that the taillights are off, it doesn't mean that because they couldn't see the front of the car, it doesn't mean that the headlights weren't off also. They could have, they could have turned both lights off, possibly. Because you could, if they couldn't see it, it wouldn't be on a dash cam or a body cam. That's true, Your Honor. That's true. But I think it's important that the probable cause issue could have been established had their dash cam been in operation or even in the car. But one officer says it's not there, another officer says it wasn't working. So the idea of the state arguing that they had probable cause, there's no evidence of that other than the, the, the officer saying, we looked around and saw the taillights, or didn't see taillights, yet the body cams showed the taillights being on when they approached the vehicle. And did anybody testify as to what time, what time period that was when they initially saw, turned around to say that the taillights were out, and then, then when they turned around to turn it to pull them over? It's about 1.30 in the morning, Your Honor. No, but I mean, how, what time? Was that five minutes, ten minutes that all this transpired? Oh, I think it's probably within a minute or two. They, they indicate they, they turned on their emergency lights, made a U-turn, and stopped Mr. Adams. There was no testimony or any indication, either at trial or in the incident reports, that Mr. Adams tried to elude by driving too fast or driving away. The Is it an issue? Was it an issue down below that they failed to preserve the video cam, dash cam? Was that right? The, the issue was spoken of, Your Honor. I'm not sure about the phrasing you used. The officers testified about the dash cam. Either Officer Collins or Officer Oswick said, the camera wasn't on. The other officer says, well, I'm not sure we wouldn't have one. And that's in my brief, Your Honor. So with that, Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to suggest that there was no le legitimate basis for the stop of the vehicle. These officers came up with an idea to stop a lone vehicle driven by a black man at 1.30 in the morning. It was a pretext, and there was no real reason for them to stop the vehicle. And therefore, I'm asking that the weapon that was found be suppressed. I have one more question for you. I noticed in the journal entry, it says that he entered a no contest plea. And then in the next paragraph, it says the court then accepted the defendant's guilty plea. So did he plead no contest, or did he plead guilty? Because there's a conflict, conflict in the journal entry. It is, it's my recollection, Your Honor, that he entered a no, no contest plea. Okay. But then the court converts that to a guilty plea. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Holly. It, it, it does say that the court finds the defendant guilty, but it says the court then accepted the defendant's guilty plea. And based upon the facts as found by this court, the court finds the defendant guilty. So I, there's a con, it's. Ju Judge, we made sure we entered the no contest okay. to preserve the suppression issue. I just wanted to confirm that. I have a question about the other entry on the case. It's uh, the entry that denied the motion to suppress. Uh, it's very short. Did the court issue any entry uh, explaining the reasons or uh, providing analysis? Uh, or did it, is this the sole entry, which is a, basically a one-liner? Defendant's motion to suppress is denied. I'm assuming that's the only entry issued concerning the motion to suppress. That was the only indication I had that the issue was denied. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you for appearing this morning. Attorney O'Brien will take
take the matter under advisement, issue our decision. The clerk of courts will mail you a copy of uh, the court's decision on the day it's released. Uh, you can also keep an eye on the Supreme Court of Ohio's website where the opinions are posted. Uh, thank you again for appearing today. Appreciate your attention.